Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Merrick Garland has presided over the most aggressive attack on civil liberties, and in particular an attack on the practice of traditional Christianity that any living American has seen. Now, Garland would never say that in public, of course. That would be too straightforward. His approach is feline, not canine. Every word is a weasel word. Under sustained questioning, the real Merrick, Merrick Garland emerges, and it is filthy and dishonest. Here he was in the Senate yesterday, facing off against Mike Lee of Utah. DOJ has announced charges against 34 individuals for blocking access to or vandalizing abortion clinics. And there, there have been over 81 per, per, per reported attacks on pregnancy centers, 130 attacks on Catholic churches since the leak of the Dobbs decision, and only two individuals have been charged. So how do you explain this disparity? We apply the law equally. Um, I will say you're quite right. There are many more prosecutions with respect uh, to the um, um, blocking of the uh, um, of the abortion centers, but that is generally because they are, those actions are taken in, uh, with photography at the time, during the daylight, and uh, seeing the person who did it is uh, quite easy. Um, it, the, those who are attacking the pregnancy resources centers, uh, which is a, a horrid thing to do, are doing this at night um, in the dark. In case you didn't follow that, we quote, apply the law equally we just can't for some reason manage to investigate crimes that occur after dark. It's the sundown rule, well known in legal circles. It's hard to believe that Merrick Garland actually said that in a Senate hearing until you remember that, of course, he will say anything, and he does. We're not persecuting Christians, he'll tell you. Then he'll send the FBI after Mark Houck. Houck is a pro-life lay preacher who is praying outside an abortion clinic when a pro-abortion extremist harassed his 12-year-old son. So as any father would, Houck shoved the man out of his son's face. That's what happened. It was not a crime, we know that, because no local prosecutor pursued it. And it is certainly, without question, not a federal felony to push a lunatic out of your 12-year-old son's face. But under Merrick Garland, it is now a felony. Almost a year after that happened, Garland sent armed men to arrest Mark Houck in front of his family. On September 23rd, about 6.45 in the morning, uh, that, that's uh, when those 20 so, so called agents, full SWAT gear, uh, the heavily armored vests, ballistic shields, helmets, uh, battering ram, um, banged on my door. Yesterday, Josh Hawley asked Garland to explain that behavior, the utterly indefensible totalitarian behavior. And Merrick Garland, of course, in his soft spoken way, was delighted to defend it. Let's take a look at the hardened criminals that your Justice Department sent these armed agents to go terrorize on that morning. Here they are. Here they are at mass. Here's the seven children with Mr. Houck and his wife. He has offered to turn himself in. And this is who you go to terrorize. You are the attorney general. Give me your answer. Do you think that it was objectively reasonable and they followed your guidelines? 
in sending 20 to 30 armed agents to terrorize these people? Yes or no? The facts I have, which are those presented by the FBI, are not consistent with your description. So you think it was reasonable? I'm saying the facts are not as you describe. You use an unbelievable show of force with guns that I just note liberals usually decry. We're supposed to hate long, long guns and assault style weapons. You're happy to deploy them against Catholics and innocent children. He doesn't care. He's got no soul, obviously. And if anything, Josh Hawley's description is too narrow. It's not just Catholics that Merrick Garland has targeted with force. It's anybody who expresses a belief in biblical Christianity in public. But it is true that Catholics do seem to be getting a disproportionate share of federal law enforcement attention under Joe Biden. The FBI, as you may know, just drafted a memo claiming that radical traditional Catholics are somehow a national security threat, presumably because they tend to pray outside of abortion clinics. In March of 2021, Paul Vaughn and 10 others were peacefully praying at an abortion clinic in Tennessee. They didn't damage any property. They hurt no one. More than a year after they dared to do that to pray, Merrick Garland sent the FBI to terrorize Vaughn and his 11 children at their home. But if you're not going to let me, then I'll, I'll just- No, I'll I wanna go. know why you were banging on my door with a gun. You're not gonna tell me anything? No, do not. You, I, I, I tried. You no, you didn't. Yes, I did. You did not try. You have to wonder when you see a tape like that, where are so-called Christian leaders? Where's Russell Moore and all the other breastfeeding Christians as that happens, as the U.S. government cracks down on Christianity, on prayer? Silent. Paul Vaughn and his co-conspirators now face more than a decade in prison. Meanwhile, just in case you want to know what the scale is for punishment, the Department of Justice under Joe Biden let half the rioters go who tried to torch a courthouse in Oregon, no charges whatsoever, of 99 cases that the Portland U.S. Attorney brought over that courthouse siege for crimes like assaulting federal officers and civil disorder. More than 47 were dropped by DOJ. The most serious penalties for most of the defendants who pleaded guilty turned out to be community service. So the DOJ under Merrick Garland absolves Joe Biden voters of actual terrorism while doing everything they can to terrify, humiliate, and destroy people who pray in public. They're targeting specifically anyone who is religious, humiliating them in front of their children. Now, why are they doing this? Because on some level, all governments hate religious people because it's competition. And revolutionary governments, totalitarian governments, go after religious people first. It happened in the French Revolution, it happened in the Bolshevik Revolution, and it's happening now. That's why parents who dare to complain about their children being sexually indoctrinated and openly sexualized are attacked, in some cases, by the DOJ. Again, you can see why. Young people raised to believe that God is in charge are much harder for the government to control as they grow up. They won't worship the government. But, by contrast, if a child is raised to be a narcissist, someone who thinks, well, I can change my gender, he will grow up confused, weak, and reliant on the people in charge of the state. It's a very simple principle. It's why the Maoist government went after Tibetan monks. Anyone who sincerely believes in God is a threat. And that is the measure of a free country in the end. Are you allowed to believe that there's an authority higher than the people in charge of your government? That has always been the hallmark of America, religious liberty. It's in the First Amendment. But in Canada, of course, that's all disappeared. Canada has now become an atheist totalitarian state with amazing speed. And in Canada, it's now a crime to object to sexualized drag shows for children. You're not allowed to say a word. Late last month's month, a pastor in Calgary was violently throw, thrown out of an all ages, in other words, for children, drag queen story hour for daring to object to the sexualization of children. Watch this. We are now calling the police. So that's the video. <laughs> that's what happened. Who committed the violence in that video? The guy on the ground was the pastor. Before we answer the question, some context will remind you that in Canada, showing any disloyalty at all to the Trudeau government could get your bank account frozen and your truck seized. So maybe you're not surprised to learn that that man on the ground, whose name is Pastor Derek Reamer, who showed profound disrespect for Justin Trudeau's ongoing efforts to sexualize children and mutilate the genitals of children, 
woke up yesterday to the police banging on his door and telling him he was going to be arrested. Why are you showing up in my home? Because this is where you live, right? Yeah, you guys you could call me and we could... Sorry, what that? You could have called me. I've been trying to. When? This morning. We need to talk about what happened on the weekend this evening, right? Why do we need to talk about it? Because you're going to be arrested for it and charged. Okay. So we can we'll deal with it this morning, or I can just put warrants out for you. Charged with what? Mischief and causing a disturbance. Where are all the professional Christians? You have to wonder that again. Where's David French and Beth Moore and Tim Keller and all these people who are defending Christianity as actual Christians are being arrested for being Christians? Hmm. Not a word. Well, today, Pastor Derek Reamer confirmed that a warrant was out for his arrest for hate crimes. And he was right about that. He was not overstating it because this afternoon he was literally arrested. And he said he was in custody. Is there a reason you're blocking me from using the sidewalk? Obstruction, they're working here. I'm not going to obstruct them. Do you mind if I ask you what he's being arrested for? Are you going to provide your identification? Pardon? Will you provide your ID? It's for you to answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why is he being arrested? He has warrants. Warrants out for his arrest? Yeah. This is what happens when we go against the Drake. Wow! That doesn't look like the Canada you thought you knew! All Molson and sled dogs or some stormtrooper in sunglasses won't answer a question before you provide your ID. And then the pastor sitting in a car with bars on the windows getting hauled away to jail for being thrown to the ground at Drag Queen Story Hour. Jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Christians would be persecuted as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and Luke 21, 12. Matthew 24, 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Luke 21, 12. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. So teachers in this country losing their jobs for trying to protect their children from efforts to sexualize them. In the Drupa School District in California, teachers are prohibited from telling parents when their children are, quote, transitioning to another gender. So you're kid could be getting castrated or chemically or physically, and you're not allowed to know that. Jessica Tapias teaches in that district. She refused to comply with the policy. She said it violated her Christian beliefs as well as her basic responsibilities as a teacher. So she was fired for that. She's brave enough to join us now along with her attorney, Brad Dacus. Jessica, first to you, I assume the other teachers in your district complied with this grotesque order, why did you not? Uh, great question, Tucker. I'm truly afraid that many other teachers don't even know they're under these directives. I didn't know I was under these directives until I found out. And when I found out from my school district that I was under these directives, I chose to speak up about them and stand my ground and stand in my faith and beliefs. That's when they said that's gonna be an issue you have to comply with these directives or your job is on the line. And so I chose, I chose God. I chose to stick with my Christian faith. And because of that, they released me from employment because in their words, they could not accommodate my religious beliefs. Bless you for doing that and you should do that. But you are also siding with parents, all of whom, no matter who they voted for in the last election, you'd think would want to know if their children are being castrated, like their children. Don't you think parents want to know? Yes, I think parents have the right to know everything about their children. And I will not partake in withholding any information from a parent. I'm a parent myself, and I would be very upset about that. So this fight is not just for the sake of my job loss. This fight is for the protection of all children. This fight is for the preservation of parental rights. Amen. But Brad, is this, since you're the attorney here, is it legal to fire someone for refusing to hide essential facts from parents who are the guardians of, ch of these children? This is a clear breach of public trust, and it's a clear violation of her Title VII rights. She was fired not because of the job she did, Tucker. She was fired because of her religious beliefs. And mind you, uh, she's not alone. We at Pacific Justice Institute, we're representing hundreds of people, employees who are fired because of their faith. And the issue is, is also one of the parents. They're scared, Tucker, right now. They, they see all of what's going on. They're horrified by it. And it's for that reason, on our website, we've developed uh, customized opt-out forms for all 50 states 
where parents for free can download opt-out forms, start learning what their rights are, uh, as well as the material that's being given to the kids and the grandkids throughout the country in public schools. Jessica, I have to ask, were there, and I, and I know what the answer I want to hear, were there teachers you work with who came up to you and congratulated you for your bravery, I hope? You know, Tucker, I'm being totally overwhelmed in the best way possible with hundreds Good. of teachers reaching out to me, um, telling me that they're ready to die on this hill with me, that they completely align with my views on this, that they are ready to stand up to this beast with me and stand for the protection of children and stand for parental rights, you know, stand for the fact of the matter that as Christians, we, we can also be in the public sector. And at this point, I feel that I was told you need to choose one or the other. Do you want to be a yeah. public school teacher or do you want to continue practicing your Christian yeah. faith? Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Free speech and religious freedom under fire again in Canada. This time it's not pastors getting arrested over COVID-19 restrictions, but a 16-year-old high school student. Josh Alexander shared his thoughts about transgender ideology at St. Joseph's Catholic High School in Renfrew, Ontario. Officials suspended him from class for the rest of the school year, and when he showed up to class for the second semester, he was promptly arrested by two police officers. Well, here to share what happened is Josh Alexander. Josh, it's good to talk with you. So what happened in class? What did you say that got you in trouble? The, uh, the whole issue started uh, back in October, I suppose. Um, I had moved to the Catholic board, and uh, female students in the school informed me that... Uh, Male students were using the female washrooms and they were concerned by this. So I decided to talk about that. Um, I voiced my beliefs and uh, I expressed concern to the principal. Um, a female student also expressed concern to the principal and we were both ignored. So at that point, I decided to organize a protest outside to uh, shed some uh, light on what was going on in, behind closed doors. And uh, they ended up suspending me indefinitely two days before the, uh, the actual protest. They gave me uh, an exclusion order. This exclusion order was completely unlawful and discriminatory. And uh, so I decided to um, show up to school um, regardless of the exclusion order. And at that point, they hit me with a trespassing notice and another suspension. I waited all of that out until the end of the semester, lost four of my credits. And uh, by the beginning, next, uh, beginning of the next semester, um, with my lawyer, I informed them that I would return to school and continue to adhere to my religious beliefs. Not long into that time, I was uh, brought to the office, the principal blocked the exit, and uh, two police officers ended up uh, entering the building. And when they told me to leave, I explained to them the situation, how I was only in that situation because of my uh, beliefs and that I uh, exercised my fundamental freedoms and that I wasn't going to leave on a request. So uh, they ended up arresting me and they charged me with trespassing. Were you hateful or disrespectful? What tone did you take when you said what you did? No, no, I wasn't I wasn't disrespectful at all. I, uh, I voiced my beliefs, my sincere beliefs, and uh, I never directed at a specific trans student that was doing anything. Um, I don't contone their behavior, but I also sympathize with them because they're a victim of our society and our education system and our the terrible parents that have encouraged and pushed that on their children. I was called a racist, a sexist, a bigot. Uh, by st like staff and students were involved in this stuff. I just continued to voice my beliefs, and uh, I had ended up getting me arrested. There was conditions they wanted me to agree to in order to return to school. As a Christian, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to accept the falsehood. I'm not going to go along with the mainstream narrative that is completely contrary to God's natural order. I couldn't agree to those conditions, and. Uh, that's where I'm at at this point. Were you actually taken to the police station and booked, put in jail? Uh, no, they actually, they charged me from the cruiser and then they ended up uh, releasing me to my brother. Finally, Josh, how important is your Christian faith to you? Tell us about your relationship with Christ. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly important. Um, I probably wouldn't be here today uh, if it wasn't for it. And uh, I, I recognize that our, uh, our freedom of religion is under attack. and. Uh, like I said earlier, God's natural order is under attack. The family unit 
in general is uh, being attacked from every angle and they're starting with the youth. Um, you can see it not only in the education system, but even what they're doing with the Drake Queen story time hours. I was actually arrested the day after um, at the school. I was arrested twice in two days um, because I was uh, quoting scripture um, outside of a uh, Drake Queen story time. And uh, the police arrested me for that and uh, charged me again. I would say my, my faith plays a fairly large role in it. I'm not going to silence myself. Uh, we're told to go into the world and preach the gospel, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see where that goes. There are consequences in a fallen world when you do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3 1 Corinthians 12, 26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Here's an amazing story. Isabel Vaughn Spruce is the leader of 40 Days for Life campaign in Birmingham, England. She's not a terrorist. She's the opposite. She's someone who prays a lot. Well, early this month, she was praying silently outside an abortion clinic in Birmingham. She wasn't yelling or carrying a sign or blocking the doorway or doing anything disruptive. She was just praying, praying, not to the government, to God. And that's not allowed anymore. So police approached her and arrested her and charged her with violating a public space protection order and committing, quote, antisocial behavior. And we're not making this up. It was caught on video. Here it is. Uh, what, what are you here for today? Uh, physically, I'm just standing here. Okay. Why, why here of all places? I know you, you don't live nearby. But this is an abortion center. You're praying? I, I might be praying in my head. Um, so I, I, I'll ask you once more, will you voluntarily come with us now to the police station for me to ask you some questions about today and other days where there are allegations that you've broken public space of protection? Uh, if I've got a choice, then no. Okay, well then, you're under arrest. I can't suspicion of failing to comply with the public spaces protection order. Back in December, we spoke to a woman called Isabel Vaughn Spruce. Isabel Vaughn Spruce was arrested for the crime of praying outside an abortion clinic in Birmingham, England. The clinic was closed at the time, but the police didn't care. Praying was enough. They charged her anyway. Well, now it's happened again. A Catholic priest has just been arrested by police in Birmingham for praying near the same abortion clinic. He was holding a sign saying he was praying for free speech. That priest is Father Sean Coe. He joins us with his legal counsel, Lorcan Price. He's with Alliance Defending Freedom UK. Did I simplify that in an unfair way? Were you doing anything violent or anything beyond praying in front of this abortion clinic? Well, nobody should be criminalized for the thoughts that they're having in their own head. And this is what I was um, threatened with arrest for. I wasn't actually arrested, but I was interrogated for it and um, questioned about the thoughts that I was having in my own head, my prayers to God. And then I was charged for doing just this. It's slightly more complicated because as I say, I, you say I did have a sign, but it was saying I was praying for free speech, which I believe is being threatened in the United Kingdom, which it clearly is. And also, uh, perhaps the most absurd uh, charge that was laid against me is that I was also charged for having a bumper sticker on my car, which says, Unborn Lives Matter, and I parked this within the censorship zone, which the local council had established. It's a shocking story, more shocking than I realized, and thank you for telling it. I want to go to your attorney now and ask, in a Christian country, which it is officially, that invented the concept of free speech and bequeathed it to us and the rest of the English-speaking world, how can speech and Christianity be criminal offenses? Tucker, unfortunately, this situation has been developing for some time. Um, these offenses were originally intended to deal with what they called antisocial behavior, but gradually they've been expanded over time now to include, uh, as Father Sean outlined, prayer, including even silent prayer. We've had quite a sinister situation where in one video we've seen authorities arresting a, a gentleman called Adam Smith Connor. He's a, an army veteran asking what he was praying about. And that was 
whether or not they decided to, to charge him in that case. People are waking up, starting to realize really that rights, as you mentioned, that had taken for granted that have been well established in, in the history of this country are being eroded significantly over the last number of years. And it's quite a sinister situation now where we have, even as I speak, the parliament uh, you see in the picture behind me will be debating in the coming weeks whether or not to expand these censorship zones further. I think your audience may be interested here. We're, we're not talking about a few feet outside the front door of these clinics. These are over 160 yard censorship zones, which means that right around the block and across the street, people are prohibited from praying, prohibited from offering help to women, prohibited even from in any way influencing decisions uh, according to these laws. So it's, it's quite an absurd, as Father Sean said, situation. It's also quite sinister. Are Catholics saved? The question, are Catholics saved, cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. Just like the question, are Baptists, Presbyterians, Methodists, or Lutherans saved, cannot be answered in a universal sense. A person is not saved by being any specific denomination. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, as we read in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace you have been saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. There is likely no denomination of the Christian faith in which every member truly has personally trusted in Christ as Savior. There are an estimated 1.2 billion Roman Catholics in the world, and among those, there is a significant amount of differences in beliefs and practices. Roman Catholics in the United States do not have identical beliefs and practices as Roman Catholics in Italy. Catholics in Latin America are not the mirror image of Catholics in Africa. While the religious authorities of the Roman Catholic Church put forth the notion that all Catholics hold to the same beliefs and observe the same practices, this is definitely not the case. The different teachings within Catholicism is another reason why the question, are Catholics saved, cannot be answered definitively. If we change the question to, are Catholics who adhere to official Roman Catholic beliefs and practices saved, we can have a definite answer. And the answer to this question is no because the official teaching of Roman Catholicism is that salvation is not by faith alone, through grace alone, in Christ alone. The Roman Catholic Church teaches that one must have good works and observe the rituals of Roman Catholicism in order to be saved. It is important to remember that not all Catholics hold to the Roman Catholic understanding of salvation. There are Catholics who truly and fully believe that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone. So, are Catholics saved? Do Catholics go to heaven? It depends. If the question is, are there saved Catholics, then the answer is yes. If the question is, will a person go to heaven if he or she holds to the official Roman Catholic doctrine of salvation, the answer is no. Is worship of saints and Mary biblical? The Bible is absolutely clear that we are to worship God alone. The only instances of anyone other than God receiving worship in the Bible are false gods, which are Satan and his demons. All followers of the Lord God refuse worship. Peter the Apostle refused to be worshipped, as we read in Acts 10, 25 and 26. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am also a man. The angels refused to be worshipped, as we read in Revelation 22, 8 and 9. Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brother and the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. The response is always the same. Worship God. Whether the practice is described as worship or veneration or any other term, the problem is the same. Anytime we ascribe something that belongs to God to someone else, it is idolatry. The Bible nowhere instructs us to revere, pray to, rely on, or idolize anyone other than God. We are to worship God alone, as we read in Luke 4, 8. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Only God is worthy to receive glory and honor and power, as we read in Revelation 4, 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. God alone is worthy to receive our worship, adoration, and praise, as we read in Revelation 15.4. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you, 
for your judgments have been manifested. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God! What if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.